Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town Hall of Rolton Beach. And we're going to begin this evening with a public hearing. Mr. Hugh, you, you want to have it? Yes, sir. Before we get started on the public hearing, I'd like to ask Heather if she would address the changes to the normal public hearing process due to COVID-19. There is a new regulation when there is a public hearing that you have to wait 24 hours from the end of the public hearing if you have remote meeting. We're not technically remote meeting because we're all here. However, since the public doesn't have the opportunity to do it, we should abide by that and give the extra 24 hours, which would mean that the earliest we could pass the budget would be third, well, tomorrow when this ends, but I would recommend if you're doing it, I would go over Thursday morning, anytime after that. The budget ordinance that's presented tonight has been prepared as directed by the Holden Beach Board of Commissioners along with three administrative refinements that have been made subsequent to the budget message being delivered. Uh, the first one, uh, the first two are basically errors and omissions on my part. Um, we had a late addition to the budget, uh, to the this year's fiscal year budget uh, for Florence and Michael category C. So the Florence edition is $798,000 in the B Park Fund, and also the Michael category C is a $427,000 edition uh, in the B Park Fund. Both of those are zero sum, no cost additions to the budget. They're administrative in nature, they are in the existing budget. Um, the one police officer directed by the board uh, was added as a detective. That is a, at Chief Dixon's request, that is a salary delta of some $3,800. So administratively, um, I took it upon myself to um, add that as a detective position. But that um, increased cost is reflected in the budget. Um, of particular note is that the governing body expense entitled available for appropriation uh, in an amount of $197,821 is in effect a contingency appropriation and as such it violates the Physical Control Act which limits such an appropriation to no more than 5% of all other appropriations in the same fund. So what does that mean? We're probably about $40,000 more um, in that contingency fund as it is written uh, right now than it should be. There are a number of ways that that can be remedied, um, a, a number of ways. and without the benefits of the board's discussion, I'm, I hesitate to put any of those forward. Uh, it may be that during your discussions, if you change the budget ordinance, that it'll, it'll take care of itself. Uh, some specific highlights uh, include that the tax base is estimated at just under $1.351 billion. The use of the Beach and Inlet Capital Reserve Fund to pay specific debt service on the Central Reach Special Obligation Bond and several other strategic beach-related expenses in the amount of uh, just under $1.5 million. Maintaining the current tax rate of $0.20 cents per $100, a contribution equal to $0.02 cents of the ad valorem tax collection is to be transferred to the Beach and Inlet Capital Reserve Fund. Reduction of the sewer assessment by 35% from $497.30 to $370. Uh, this uh, budget in front of you provides for an estimated general fund balance of 77%. Uh, it also prepares for the construction of FEMA, Hurricane Florence, and Michael storm damage mitigation projects, the Category G expenses collectively are um, come in at right about $24.4 million. 
as stated before, the addition of the one law enforcement officer as a detective and procurement of three police vehicles. Construction upgrades of the sewer lift station three and engineering for the same at lift station two. Financing for both upgrades is recommended. <clears throat> a lease purchase a group acquisition of a sewer vector truck at $366,000. Appropriations are made for a second water tower evaluation and a water sewer capacity study. Uh, this budget is uh, before you ensures that the three canal subdivisions navigability is maintained by ensuring permits are current and conducting spoiled area maintenance. It also provides for continued federal, state, and local beach inlet and waterways advocacy, uh, maintain or provides for funding of a 2% merit performance pool, continues the rollback and recycling programs, pays a second half from the avenue, and procures two replacement trucks, one in beach and one in water and sewer. In summary, by fund, uh, the general fund comes in at $3.63 million. The water and sewer fund is $5.06 million. The beach parks, access recreation, tourism fund, the beach park fund is uh, $28.3 million. Uh, Holden Beach Harbor Canal Dredging Fund is $960,000. Heritage Harbor is $634,000. Harbor Acres is $1.11 million. Water Capital Reserve Fund is $99,000. The Sewer Capital Reserve Fund is $47,000. And the Beach Inlet Capital Reserve Fund is estimated at $2.2 four million dollars for a grand total of this year's budget coming in at slightly over 42 million dollars as a final reminder um, depending on where we go in the timing of any discussions and revisions that you might want to make we have to adopt a budget by the first of july Anybody have any questions on Mr. Hewitt? I know it's a public, it's a public hearing, but for clarification on anything? I just, um, because I haven't been watching as carefully, I guess, I just wanted to ask about Lockwood Folly dredging. We have $40,000, and that's, that's all. Is that based on past history of the alternate year when we don't put sand on the east end and it's just just the the typical side cast and you know not serious dredging as i think of it that is correct but we are still planning to have a conversation with the corps about the upcoming project Any more questions before we go to public comments? Yeah, I have a question. David, when I look at the revenue for B Park, I see the, the bottom line, $28 million. How much carryover do we have from the end of the year? I, I don't see that listed here. We must have some money in a B Park fund now, right? Well, I mean, those are fund balances that, and your fund balance is, is always available to you. Um, the, the fund balance in the B Park fund, um, as it is today, is probably about $3.2 million. So, and that, so that's in addition to the sand fund? Yes, sir. So David, just to clarify what Mike was asking, there's three million in the day, this twenty-eight million would go on top of that to make thirty-one in that fund. No. Okay. The twenty-four point four million dollars for Florence and Michael, along with the one point three million dollars for Florence and Michael categories Z money, mm -hmm. um, those are basically reimbursement funds. 
remember this is an operational budget, those FEMA reimbursements are, you got to pay it up front and then you get it back. So you, that money will wash, if you will. I mean, it's, it's in and it's out. Well, it's out for, on the front, really. Yeah. But, but I guess, if I could Go ahead. paraphrase, that we have $3 million in addition to what's listed here in the budget. We yeah. come. You've, you've got six. Right. But I mean, we'll have uh, 3.2 and 2.2. You've got five, four. Exactly. But it's just for this, it's 3.2. Yeah. Right. It's what you see in the Inlet and Beach Capital Reserve Fund is the reserve fund that's set up specifically to hold that. The 3.2 million is the unobligated B Park fund. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions? Are we ready to go to the public hearing with the public? Any feedback from the public? Madam Clerk, do you have any feedback from the public? Yes, there is about 40 in front of you, and if the board desires, Christy and I can read them. They're on the website, but it's up to the board what you would like us to do. Well, it's the pleasure of the board. That's a lot of reading. Yeah. I, my understanding is that the commissioners and staff have received copies of those emails that we've received. Is that understanding correct? Yes, sir. Yes. So everyone that has done their homework will have seen the input that we have received as a town, right? That's right. Well, we got we just got the input as we came in tonight. We did. I'm not sure you sent them all to us. Is that no. Correct? Yeah. The, it's in, it's before you on your desks today, and we. I also have it online if that matters for you. If the public's interested, it's under the board of commissioners page. It's a file under that. And a, and a lot of the, obviously, all of them probably are, I sent an email, most of them know, um, I sent an email to a list of folks that I have collected their email addresses over the last year. So, as they have written us with complaints or suggestions or uh, requesting information, like the ones about the dog park and speaking and stuff, I went out to about 125 folks and asked them for their input on some of my concerns around the budget. Uh, there were a mixture of folks in there. I knew that some of the folks would, would not agree, and I knew some of the folks <clears> would agree. Uh, we got 40 comments. I'm not suggesting that we read them all. I would just request that, the, if it's okay for everybody, that before we take our vote on Thursday that you review these comments or we'll review them before we talk about the budget in the regular meeting. But I'm not advocating that we read all of them. And what I'm trying to ensure is the fact that all the commissioners and staff that should have the ability to review all that have been sent to the town, that we will have done that before it's time to vote. So we're up to date on distributing what the town's received so far, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Everybody on the same page on that? <clears throat> all right. What's well, the pleasure of the board to go forth? Since we don't have other people in attendance, we have received all the written commentary. And if I don't hear anything else, I'm going to entertain a motion that we uh, adjourn the public hearing. Of course, I guess I made a mistake by not having a motion to go into the public hearing, didn't I? But the formality is understood. Were, were we going to adjourn this, or were we going to recess it if we defined when we were going to have our meeting? You're your public hearing is what's in front of you now. I think that your discussion and consideration, which is in the main body of the uh, the agenda, is where you will make that determination. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so I'd like to have a motion that we adjourn the public hearing portion of this. Motion made. Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. So we have concluded the public hearing portion of tonight's meeting. At this point in time, we'll turn our attention to the regular meeting. And uh, the first item on the regular meeting agenda is an invocation. And let's just have a moment of silence and reflection, if I may, please.
you very much. <clears throat> we'll officially call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone here by listening or in the presence of uh, those of us in the room. Uh, welcome to everyone. On item number three on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, which is to my right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number four on the agenda is the consideration of approving the agenda as presented. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion made by Mr. Tyner. Second. Second. In discussion, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Favor say no. The agenda is presented as approved. And now let's turn our attention to the consideration of approving the minutes 5A, B, and C in the meetings of April 30th, May 19th, and May 28th. Is there a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. Mr. Tyler says he moves. Question? Or second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Favor say no. They are all passed unanimously. Number six, comments on the agenda and general items. Um, do we have anything, Madam Clerk? No, sir. All right. We move to number seven. Discussion of possible consideration of ordinance 20-10. Mr. Hewitt. The only thing I can offer to the uh, the preamble enabled by the public hearing is the 5% contingency issue. I think that that's uh, probably in the $40,000 range that that line item would have to be um, adjusted, which as I said before, uh, there are a number of ways to do that. But I, would, I think that um, through conversations with the board uh, that perhaps that y'all actions you may take may remedy that. Any comments or questions? Uh, given the input that I received and the 40 comments that we received uh, by the town clerk, uh, the, the majority, not all, but the majority of the feedback I got was folks were in favor of us adding three policemen to this year's budget. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to amend the current budget ordinance to add three additional policemen to the budget. Is there a second? Is there a second to Mr. Tyner's motion to add three police officers to the budget? For lack of hearing a second, the motion dies on the floor. Is there another motion to be made of any kind? I would like to make a motion to add one additional police officer to the one that we already have added for a total of two to the budget. Okay. Is there a second? second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. And the motion is to add a total of two to the police force. Not, not add a total to add one to the existing ordinance. Is that right? Correct me. I want to make sure I get it right. Is it one? Okay. Re restate your motion. What are you doing, Murdoch? To restate your motion. Add one additional officer to the one that we have already had for a, which would be a complete total of two. Second. I got lost there somewhere. All right. Does everybody else understand what was done? All right. Any discussion? I just want to make um, make sure that we are still going to have the investigation of having part time in the summer as well. Correct? That does not go away. Well, I think that, I think that depends on. That's a different. That's that's another agenda item. Yeah. Oh no, I know it's an agenda item. I'm just talking about in terms of what we were thinking of doing, it's not going to alter that. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that on the agenda. Okay. All right. Any more discussion, questions? 
You ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Aye. Who said no? We got a no. So it's four to one. No, no, Mike no said I said no. no. Got two. Okay, three to two. All right. I guess three to two carries the motion. All right. I, I um, probably should have amended the motion, the previous motion, but I guess in addition to the police officer, we need to have a vehicle for the police officer. Uh, I, I, can I yes. can I interject? At the last board meeting, y'all defined a police officer to include all of the accoutrements that went with them. Okay. So that if if that understanding on my part is not correct, you need to clarify that for me, please. And I'm fine with that. If everybody else is. It's the police package. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, um, once again, based on feedback I received from the input I solicited, I'd like to make a motion to amend the um, salary pool for merit increases from 2% to 3%. Second. Uh, if I understand the motion, I'm looking for a second. I second. Okay. Discussion. I know the last meeting we had or budget workshop we had we said we didn't have any information to base what if we needed three or two percent or whatever i've gone and done some research on a lot of the large or the companies that do the research for corporations about what they're looking at this year and they're looking at about three three and a half for corporations i did go look at the county's budget uh, and they are looking at two percent across the board for satisfactory performers and then on top of that anywhere from a half a percent to three and a half percent for merit and I, I consider the county to be one of our competitors to say the least so uh, based upon that information uh, based upon the feedback that i got when i solicited um, information from property owners and residents and voters uh, that's why i'm want to amend the budget to make it 3% instead of 2%. Have a discussion? I just want to say, I mean, I made this point, I think, the last meeting, that by the end of the summer, we're going to know what our occupancy tax basically looks like. We can always add something before the end of the year. And to me, being conservative right now and saying 2% so that the staff knows 2% is what there is, knowing that if things look good, we can change it in the fall would be my way of addressing it. It's two now, and if things are not as dire as, as mm -hmm. we think might happen, then we can increase that based on what happens in July, August, and September. I want to ask David or town manager one question. Do you do all annual reviews at one time or they're spread based out? Based on the evaluation, Dave. So um, as a matter of fact, there are two or three that are due the 1st of July, and they go all the way through the year. So if we waited to the fall of the increase, we'd have to go back and reconsider folks earlier in the year. Well, I, I think that the way that um, we do evaluations is you get a score. And the score is not based on the percentage of, of the merit. I was talking about when it was raised. I mean, if you were working at oh, yeah. 2% and then said we were the 3, then the folks who got evaluated in June or July would not be treated the same as somebody in the fall. Well, your, your evaluation is is would still be the same. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the evaluation well, would still, your score would still be the same. I guess you could always go back and make the piece. Let's, let's say somebody got a 90 and whatever that is in terms of 2%, that would be what they were awarded on the 1st of July. Uh, if the board wanted to raise that 3%, of course you would apply that same okay. math to the extra percent. It's the way I interpret that. that, that, that. That's, that's I, I don't see that as being impossible. 
I'd just like to comment on this. <clears throat> we, we just, the board just approved hiring a whole new police officer and a whole package, which comes to over $100,000. And that's looking at the same budget, not knowing whether we're going to have the money to pay for that. And now we're going to be concerned with adding an extra $10,000 for the people who have been working for the town. It doesn't, I don't follow that logic. If we don't have the money to give the current workers an extra $10,000 that we may be able to give them in the future, then how can we possibly put on two police officers for over $200,000? Where, where does that, where does the logic come in with, with that discussion? There is none. So, so I'm in favor of giving the people the, the 3% now, because if we can absorb two police officers, we can certainly absorb the $10,000 for the current workers. We've got a motion on the floor, right? Yes. Any more discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. No. Okay, is it four to one? Mr. Brown in opposition. All right. Anything else on the budget on this line item? Are we ready to go to number eight? Ms. Pat? Do, do, oh, no. do they need to set when mm -hmm. they want to? Either now or at the end of the meeting. So we recess. need to recess and set up a recess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can do it just at the end. Uh, just be before we move on then. I would like to raise the issue once again of keeping the tax rate at where it is. So I'll, I'll make the motion before we have the discussion of why it should. So I, I would make the motion that we adjust the current budget to lower the tax rate by two cents, as was suggested by the town manager in the original budget message. Okay. Everybody understand the motion? Is there a second? I want to um, second. Aye. Okay. So, can I, so uh, I guess we're in discussion, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, can you further explain? Does that mean the exactly. two, two cent that we were not that we were going to put into the toward sand would not? Let, let me. There, there are any. You can do it any way you want, but that's simple. Instead of putting the two cents into the sand fund, mm -hmm. you could use that to lower the tax rate. But just, just again, just, just to think about this, like I say, the logic of what we're doing or what's proposed as opposed to, I've been on the board for three years now. Two of those three budget messages originally contained a 2% reduction in taxes. The prior, prior members voted two years ago not, not to lower the taxes. Last year it wasn't included. This year it is again. We've always had the money to do it. And the reason we have the money to do it is that when we did the Central Reach project, we had to raise taxes. None of the current board members were on there, but I think we probably would have all voted to raise the taxes. 15, 15 cents, I believe, was the, was the number. At that time, it was, it was over a 40% increase in the property taxes. And we did it because that's what it was going to cost to do the, the Central Reach project. Fortuitous or not, before the project began, Hurricane came through. The town received $4 million from FEMA. That $4 million was already spent. We got that money back. The people, even the people who voted for, for the tax rate at the time admitted that they would have never asked for that 15 cent tax rate if they knew that the $4 million was going to be included. We wouldn't have needed it. Just like we have all the money coming in for FEMA, we don't have to put money aside because we're going to be able to get reimbursed. So I thought we were pretty prudent. 
We took $3 million out of the $4 million and put it back because we had taken out of the B part fund. So we had a $1 million. My feeling is that $1 million belongs to the taxpayer. It doesn't belong to me to decide that we could spend it for something. We would have never put it into the town coffers if we, nobody would have asked for that extra money as a tax increase. And so we're keeping that money, and we keep saying, well, we can put it in the sand fund. Well, we've decided that we don't have to put any more money in the sand fund. We have plenty of money in the sand fund. And even without putting in the 250000 roughly, we, we have over $6 million, or close to $6 million, to, to take care of things on the beach that happen that aren't going to be covered by FEMA. So it just seems to me that for three years, we could have given the people of Holden Beach some tax relief. The people in Holden Beach were generous, and they voted to put the sand on the beach. They didn't have to do that. Their taxes were raised 40%, and this 2% reduction just seems logical to me. We shouldn't hold on to their money. We shouldn't keep it for something else, and we certainly shouldn't be keeping it for the sand fund, which doesn't serve any purpose. I mean, I'll use an analogy. If you were saving money to buy a home, and you were, you were scrimping, and you were putting $100 a month or $200 or whatever that number was aside, and building up your bank account, but all of a sudden the rich uncle passed away and left you enough money to buy that home, would you keep putting the $100 or $200 into the bank? Of course not, because you would have the money to purchase the home. We have the money to take care of the beach. We don't need more money to take care of the beach. So I'm in favor of giving that two cents back to the taxpayer. Thank you. Mr. Tyner, did you want to say something? I, I wanted to ask another question. And this is an education question. We raised the taxes, you said, by 15 cents mm -hmm. to do the so project. The but then we had a hurricane and got $4 million. Had a couple, yes. Okay. But that $4 million wasn't the total cost of doing that project. No. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah. No. But the, the point of the matter is, if you knew that the $4 million was coming, instead of going out and borrowing $12 million, we would have borrowed $8 million. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. We could have borrowed $8 million and accomplished the same thing. Gotcha. We would have never, we would have never seen the money. We wouldn't be paying any interest on the money. All of those things would have changed. Right? But it didn't. And nobody had a crystal ball. But it happened, and we got the benefit of it. And so I think the people who pay the taxes should get some reimbursement from that taxes. You know, the, the email I sent out asking folks for information and their thoughts, they, they said they would like, most of the majority of them said that, well, in fact, I think almost all of them, so, but I won't say that. Most of them said they'd like to see the money go set aside for future uses for sand. However, listen to some of the facts that as you're laying them out um, I'm sure a lot of taxpayers would love to have a, a tax decrease um, so I have some thinking to do before we take a vote <coughs> Any comments? Uh, the majority of people I've heard from want to leave alone so that's who I represent. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's fair enough. But I would ask you, and in the note that Woody sent out, nobody who responded. I, I would think there were very few people who, who sent notes to all of us. We, we got them all. Are aware that we're sitting on $28 million and that we're going we're gonna to have we have enough money in, in the in the fund. They they're just not aware of the facts. And, and I I would I would venture to guess that if they were aware of the facts, they would agree that it doesn't make sense to put more money into a fund that that already is well financed. And for the foreseeable future, there is no reason to increase that fund. I'm, I'm I think what we talked about at the budget workshop was 
you know, obviously some of the 24 million or so is to, to repair the damage and fix the beach from what's coming from FEMA. What we talked at the budget workshop was should we say for a rainy day when it, and or if something happens a year from now and it's not a storm and we need money to fix the beach and FEMA's not giving us any money. If I recall, that's part I, of our I agree, question. but we have but we have six, and, and David said it at that meeting, we, we have all the $6 million for that. It, it's not like the, you know, the cupboard is bare. Yep. We have $6 million for that. I guess the question is, We'll never know until it happens is six million enough or not. The Central Beach costs fifteen million dollars, and as I recall, we got a favorable cost for sand for dredging. So if we were sitting on ten million dollars, I'd feel a whole lot more comfortable. I don't look at and you would never take all six million and spend B part down to nothing. You know, so I think that I think this starts the clock. What we said is what I kept saying is Yes, we had a serious year of hurricanes. We are going to get basically reimbursed for fixing our beach. That will start the clock again for how many years it takes to erode the beach if there are no major storms. And then we'll be looking again at how much do we want to save over a 10 or 15 year period. That doesn't mean we stop putting money in the sand fund. It doesn't mean that we don't keep saving because we will need money at some point in time. And we're going to, we're at 204 million now because we are taking money from the sand fund to pay the central reach obligation bond this year. So I don't think that we sit there and say we don't need to fund it. We don't fund it this year because things could be difficult. Doesn't mean that the next budget year we're not going to go back to funding the sand fund. It's just it's we're on a different timeline again because we're going to have a big reimbursement, which kind of means that's our zero year again. And then we look at how many years we think we would have to do a central reach if we didn't have hurricanes that we got reimbursed for. That was the whole logic for it. When when we started to put the money aside. That was certainly the plan. That we that in ten years, twelve years, you would probably need to replenish the beach again. And and it was logical. But I'll say again what what I've said before. If you go out to the beach now, the beach is at least thirty or forty feet wider than it was before the Central Reach project was commenced. Right? We are going to add so much sand onto the beach that we are going to be much larger, mm -hmm. the beach is going to be much wider than it was at the conclusion of the Central Beach Project. Therefore, you're talking about what are we going to do 10, 15 years, 20 years down the road. And I say, I don't know. And I don't know what the conditions are going to be. I know right now that we're a hell of a lot better off borrowing money than saving money over the long term. That when we when we borrow money now, we just it, it makes more economic sense. If you take the two hundred fifty thousand dollars and give it back to the people, they're going to get ten times as much benefit as it as they are from having to pay the interest on the money you're going to borrow. I mean, it, it's simple math and it's simple finance. You, you understand that as well as anybody would. So it just, to me, it makes all the sense in the world to, to give the money back. We can, you know, there can be storms, but if the storm is going to be large, we're going to rely on FEMA again, right? FEMA may go away, we don't know. I, I, I can't argue that, I can't tell you it's not going to work, but for me, the logical way to do business here is to look at what we did. We had these same discussions. One, I have to be honest, one of the reasons I ran for this was because the people who were sitting up here didn't even recognize the fact and wouldn't recognize, intentionally would not recognize the fact that that $4 million was a benefit and we should do something with it to help the people who paid the taxes. And here we are sitting three or four years later 
and we're kind of having the same discussion. And again, it just doesn't seem right. We have six million dollars. Nobody's asking you. That's more money, or the equivalent amount of when the central reach began. And when this is over, that sand is going to be so much wider that there's no comparison. So, so I, I think we're in very good financial shape when it comes to taking care of the beach. And there's no reason to put more money into it when it can be used for other purposes. Any more comments? Okay, uh, we at the point to vote on that. Think so. Anybody ready? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. 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 The motion fails to pass. Four to one. All right. Ms. Pat, are we ready to move to number eight on the agenda? All right. Um, just because I figure that if we have some easy things that have already been in the public a couple of times, maybe we could maybe we could get some of the business done that we were supposed to do in March and April and things. I thought maybe we could get the suggested rules of procedure for the town of Golden Beach finalized and approved. Um, I do have. I do have two reservations of what the town attorney had recommended. Um, I felt that on page uh, 60, the topic exclusions that the town attorney proposed eliminating because um, she said that there were issues she felt possibly with free speech. I disagreed with that. And I did not see any reason that that H should be eliminated. Um, I mean, this was simply something that was put in because we don't want people actually bringing politics and candidacies into any discussions. It was a, a very focused what it's about. Um, that had been in the rules of procedure three years ago, two years ago, and last year. So I, I was a little bit surprised that there was a problem with that. I don't recall Noel ever saying that she had a problem with it. I would actually rather that that stay. Um, and then on page 62. Pat, thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. You said uh, H on page 60 that you want to put back in, right? Yeah, I just want to leave it. I want to leave it. Okay. And um, when you go to page 62, I don't have any problem with eliminating no assurance, that section, um, because after all, you know, we have to approve the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. If there's an issue, we would address it. Mm -hmm. But the other two... Uh, comments that were made by the uh, town attorney, which was um, for E, the last section, uh, fails to adhere to the rules of decorum outlined in the section below. Again, that was put in, that's been in there for quite a while. I don't see what the problem is with that. If, if a, somebody making a comment or speaking gets difficult, I think it's always the board's option to stop them because they are being rude or obnoxious or threatening or something. So I don't see where there's an issue with that. And under decorum, um, I think that we actually at one point had the discussion about um, speakers addressing VOC. We would not respond unless we by majority agreed to do it. So. I didn't quite understand why the town attorney wanted to take that out. We had actually had discussions about that last year or the year before and, and did that. So I, again, I basically agree with taking out G, no assurance, but the other changes that are highlighted in yellow, I disagree with and I would rather that we keep them. They weren't anything new, they were carryovers. Um, so if, if the board can agree with me, then we could approve these rules of procedure with only the agreement that G, no assurance on page 62 can be removed.
page 60, the topic exclusions. I, I um, remember very much being by the town attorney and Mr. Sullivan being <coughs> lectured on about First Amendment rights on this one. Um, and that you know, we couldn't exclude topics. So I'd, I'd like to get Mike's opinion again on this one. Well, the, the, the argument is that if you have it open for comment, that you really can't control what the person wants to comment on. You can, you can ask them to act in a certain way. You can limit their time. You want them to be civil. But if they want to talk about any specific item, then they should be free to do that. And, and that we're really not in a position to prohibit someone from uh, their free speech. I mean, that, that, that's the argument. And so, so the question is, does H in some way potentially violate a first the public right of free speech? I don't know, because I take it that when we ask public comment, we're not that have to do with town business and agenda items and not <coughs> personal things. And somebody's candidacy to me is a personal issue. It's not town business. So I, I, I don't know what happened in the past, if any, if there's ever been some unpleasantness at board meetings about candidacies and things, I don't know. But to me that is not something that really keeps the public from commenting on town business. But it does it does keep things from getting political. Yeah. So I, I reviewed these changes um, on on I have a hard time reading this one. I get on page six, I guess it's H. Um, I said I, I was okay with this one because the last time this came up, I got jumped on about free speech and First Amendment and all of that, so I assumed you didn't have a choice on it. I do agree with you that I don't think it's very, very, I don't think people are making political statements when they're making comments. So I'm, I'm okay with what you're suggesting there. That I'm okay. I'm okay with the other, other suggestions you make too. Then, what I'd like to do, I'd like to move that we adopt the suggested rules of procedure with the one change that on um, page 62, section G, no assurance is removed. <coughs> and you want to keep 60? The, the change on page 60 I want to keep, and the other changes on page 62 that are proposed I, I want to keep. I, want, I don't want them to be removed. Okay. Only no assurance. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say no. July of 2017, the board voted to amend the charter of the town to um, implement four-year stagger terms for the commissioners, and we just never updated the code book with the change, so this is just an administrative correction, so it's just an ordinance. If the board would pass that, it would reflect your actual term. Is there a motion we make this correction? I move we adopt the proposed ordinance. Just a second. That. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimously passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Number 10, Ms. Penny, you show up. Okay. In your packets, there is a list of the members of the town who um, are up for 
nominations of their seats. Some of the people can come back, some of them can not. I've checked with everybody and I've heard from everybody, but one person, everybody but one of the ones that responded is interested in serving again. So you guys are welcome to put those people back on in their spots. But there will be a few positions that have to be filled. Normally we do interviews and we cannot do interviews right now the way that we had in the past. So we're just looking for guidance from the board. Do you want to do interviews if we're still meeting like this next month where they call in? Do you want to do interviews where we just accept applications and the board reviews them and votes both based off of that? It's really however the board desires to do the interviews. There's only a couple of spots. If you guys did choose to put everybody back on, in all reality, you could also hold off for a couple of months. You would have enough for your quorums to, to meet, so that's an option also. So basically, I just need guidance on how you want to interview for the vacancies on the boards. Well, it's your pleasure, Commissioners. Well, let me let me clarify one thing real quick. Um, like with the Board of Adjustment, you got two, I think one of them is the chairman who uh, ages out as far as term. Okay. So you've still got enough there to have a quorum, so those that are remaining would be the new chairman. Right, and honestly, we're close to all other boards besides the Board of Commissioners at this point anyway, so if we don't. If you guys want to hold off on this, it's absolutely fine. If you want to put the members on who are already serving and you would like to put them back on, we could do it that way. We could hold off. But, but yes, it would just, if you chose not to fill those couple of positions right now, the people who are remaining would choose who the chairman is. Madam Clerk, I have a question. Sure. Uh, We've got some new commissioners on the board, and will you uh, refresh the board in regards to the number of years and service limitations that town imposed several years ago? They're all a little different. Um, board of Adjustment, it's three-year terms for the alternates and for their regular members, and they can serve two terms. Planning and Zoning Board is three-year terms for the regular members and one-year terms for the alternate members. Are your boards both three years, I believe, also? I so, I okay, the Inlet and Pro Beach Protection Board and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board are three-year terms, and they don't have regular versus the alternate members. If you guys wanted to choose to put the people back on the board, um, the only person that I have... I have not heard from Stu Atwell, so I'm not sure if he's interested or not. And Rhonda Dixon is not interested in serving another term. So um, if you guys wanted to go ahead today and put the other members back on, the only one that would be a little bit different would be the Board of Adjustment because you most likely would want to move a couple of these alternates up to a regular member position instead of filling the regular member position later. So... I know that sounds kind of confusing. If you want, if you did want to put the ones back on today, we could go through each board at a time, or we could just schedule interviews and do everything next month. Sorry, I know it's a little confusing with what we're doing now. Just, well, none of the boards are actually meeting during this coronavirus, right? Correct. So, so nobody's taking any action on on anything. Right. Not, we've got the done. board. We've got town hall is close to everybody but staff and the board of commissioners. Okay. So, so if I could just make a suggestion to make this simple. I would be in favor of renominating the people who are already on the boards and want to be there. And any new candidates, we wait until such time as people can actually come and we can do it the way it's been traditionally done, where we can ask some questions. Is that your motion? Well, I'm making a suggestion that maybe we would, might want to go that way. I, I would just add to it, I, I like Heather's idea of if we've got a couple vacancies, we want to remove the alternates that are already there into those permanent positions. I, I have no problem with that. And that would only affect the Board of Adjustment, but you do have three alternates and only two regular member positions, so you would have to decide which of the three. So we'd have to vote on it. Right. Which I did not prepare ballots. That's on me. No. Sorry. 
Okay. There's, there's no urgency to do anything yeah. tonight, is there? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I guess we just need to do something before everybody expires. I mean, if by what, July 1st or something? I, I would suggest if you if we want to do it by ballot, I could bring the ballots back for the July meeting, and then that way we could still hold off on the couple that we need to interview, but you guys could at least put the regular the members back on there so we don't have... Yeah, one of the boards would lose five people if we yeah. don't have anybody on there. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, if we did it in July, I'm sure that we'll meet before anybody else meets, and I don't think it would be an issue, and I'll just bring ballots so you could decide who you want to move up to the other position. Okay. All right. So we're ready to move on, right? Yes, sir. Number 11, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, asked to have this on the on the agenda because we've been uh, sitting around for a good period of time with a system development fee schedule that really doesn't reflect either the the cost or the. Uh, analysis that was done to establish it. Uh, back, just a little background. Back, back in 2017, the legislature passed uh, House Bill 436, which required towns to have an analysis done either by an engineering or a financial firm to determine the maximum fee for developmental fees. We went through that process as a town. We followed all of the uh, administrative requirements in order to establish the fee and then after that was done there was some pushback and the fees that were established were rescinded and the prior fees were reinstituted without any real analysis or uh, logic they, they were just put back and that was that uh, we had some debate on it. We were, we were going to discuss it. Uh, there were a number of things to happen. But in the interim, there was a lawsuit that came against Oak Island. And so the determination of that lawsuit put a, uh, a hold on proceeding with establishing or having another analysis done because you didn't know what could be assessed and what wouldn't be allowed to be assessed. Well, the lawsuit in Oak Island has been completed. It's clear that the undeveloped on properties can be part of the uh, assess the cost uh, and not be in violation of any of the laws. So I think it's time that we ask the town manager to put out bids to get a firm to conduct an analysis to come up with the required uh, analysis under the House Bill 436. It's, my, my request is not to establish developmental fees, just to have an analysis conducted so that we can discuss it and then ultimately establish a fee that's based on facts. That motion? Well, I, I wanted to lay out why I was doing it. The, the motion would be that we have the town manager uh, seek bids to conduct a, an analysis to comport with the requirements of House Bill 436. I second that. The motion made and second discussion. <clears throat> Just, just in addition to what Mike said, when, when we went through all of this, commissioners actually proposed, and they even used the term, these were sort of temporary, and that we were going to have a several month cooling off period to reflect and then come back to the issue. So the intent had been all along that this was not were not permanent, we were going to reevaluate. And as Mike said, then there was 
a legal issue that came in that stopped us from proceeding to schedule. So this is this is kind of picking up what had been agreed a couple of years ago. I, I don't know if I need to amend uh, Mike's um, motion or not. We had a firm do the uh, survey or the analysis last year. I'm assuming we would not pick the same firm. You did not have a firm do it last year. Well, whatever it was. <laughs> but we did have McGill, McGill and Associates do the, the, the review and come up with a recommendation. Is that not correct? The study was prepared in accordance with the requirement for a licensed engineer or an accounting professional. McGill was the one that was selected by the board um, to, to prepare that study. So the question I'm asking is, is that it would it be your choice of what firm to choose or do, do I need to make a motion that would not choose the same firm? No, this, this is just this. Hmm? This is just put out. If, okay. I could, okay. if, I could, if I could qualify just for the board's uh, benefit, in, in North Carolina, the law reads that you have a financial professional or a licensed professional engineer. In North Carolina, you do not make the selection of an engineering firm based on bids. You, you request you put a request forward for qualifications. A piece of that, of course, does include their rates, but if you're going to select an engineering firm, it's based on qualifications. So I'm, I'm assuming that your term bids is, that's really what you mean. Now, a financial professional is a different, a different uh, animal. Well, the, that's whole, the, administrative. the point I'm trying to make is we had a firm do it in whatever 2017, I would, personally, I would prefer we find a different firm as opposed to using the same firm. I have nothing against McGill, other than they did it the last time, and I'd like to get a different opinion this time. I guess it's a, the question is: Is it ultimately going to be for us to decide, or is it your decision? I think that Mr. Sullivan's motion was for me to administratively put forward a request for qualifications for the board to consider the selection of that firm. Okay. Unless I'm mistaken. No, you're right. Anything else to be said or asked? If not, I'm asking for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Unanimous, Madam Clerk. Turn the page to item number 12 on the agenda. Mr. Sullivan. Police resources. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, we, we had uh, a, lot of, a lot of discussion. Well, I guess we didn't have a lot of discussion. We just had a vote. But uh, the, the idea, I thought the reason I, I put this on here, I thought the, the idea was that... Uh, we had discussed the budget uh, and we're going to hire one police officer with the understanding that we were going to then look and see the feasibility of using seasonal officers ra rather than full-time officers since you know we have the 100 days of summer and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I guess it's still a good idea because we could determine whether or not we would be able to use police officers. Uh, but since we've decided uh, as a board to hire two police officers, a, a little bit of this, uh, the necessity for this has been uh, lessened somewhat. But I guess it's still a good idea to find out what the, what the cost of uh, having seasonal police officers uh, and the utility and the benefit and the, the detriments of, of having them. So my, I'll, I'll make the same motion that, that I would have made before we decided to hire a second one. I, I would make a motion that a committee comprised of the chief of police, the town manager, and two board members investigate 
the feasibility of hiring seasonal police officers for the town of Holden Beach commencing in the uh, next budget year and that they have a report ready for the board to consider uh, by March of next year so that they can be considered during the budget period. I just have one question about your, your timing. Um, I thought that Jeremy had said last meeting that he would need to know like in the January time frame if we were going to pursue that. So I'm just suggesting March is, is later than would be necessary. So I'd ask Jeremy what, am I remembering right that you, you were saying that you need to know like in the January time frame? Or earlier would be better. And if I'm understanding this right, okay, I don't have to agree. If we, if we don't make that decision until March and then start trying to go through any exercises whatever that decision may so, be is going to push So I, I amend that the report be presented to the board in the uh, December meeting. I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions, Connie? I think uh, just one other reminder is part of this had to do as well about putting police presence on the beach. So even hiring another off, having two new officers instead of one, this is still from the standpoint of having seasonal police doing beach patrol so that there is more recognition and perhaps more um, adherence to the rules than is happening at times with the beach patrol perhaps not getting the respect that it used to. Well, I, I, I would just say that that comes with the report. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does. We want the, the utility, how they're going to be utilized, what the cost is, how they'll be transported, what their training is going to be. There's, there's any number of questions that hopefully the committee can address and present to the board. Mr. Yu? I would ask that if you're going to put forward a motion like that, that the current Office of Primary Responsibility, that that function is housed in, that being the building inspector's office, that that also be included as part of that committee. I think by just including me from the finance side organizationally, and the police chief is, a, is assuming that the best placement organizationally for that function is in the police department. And I'm not sure that that is. Well, that, I, I don't think anybody's assuming anything. The, the, the question that we have, and I, <laughs> it's fine, the, the idea is we're going to determine whether or not we're going to hire police officers. And then, what are we going to do with those police officers? And really, I love Tim, but he has nothing to do with the police department. So that's why I didn't include him in it. Now, if, if at that point we're going to determine whether or not they're going to assume the duties of the Rangers, now we have to include Tim. If you want him in up front, I'm fine with that, but that was the reason. It wasn't any type of intentional oversight. It was just that it was limited to police functions and hiring police, seasonal police officers. We, I never raised the issue of not. I, I, I must have missed that. I was inferring, I, I heard beach rangers included in the discussion, and I automatically assumed that that was, that was going to be part and parcel of any uh, drafting or compilation of the report. And because Mr. Evans is the chief uh, code enforcement officer that has um, an extensive background on specifics to the beach itself, um, I, that's why I wanted him to be part of that conversation. Okay. Well, I guess uh, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I thought Pat's thing was that one of the things we would consider was increasing and use, utilizing the seasonal police officers for beach. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay. <coughs> right. yeah. right. 
So, so I'll ask Tim, do you want to be involved in this? Uh, if it's going to be police officers, I'm, uh, other than I, I think that it, I might have some input as far as you know the stuff that we run into that we documented and that kind of thing. You know, the You're right. load, You're right. I might have some information for them about you know some of those okay. code problems that are out there. But you, you got, here's something I would throw out there is you got to remember, when you put the police out there, I'm not, I'm not I, I don't know. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just concerned that they want to go, there was three functions that they were actually supposed to carry out. They've been carrying out that function since day one, if you read the, read the, the, the way that went. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure that the police's function is on a much higher level than what that was, you know what I mean, just by, mm -hmm. by police being police and taking oath that they take, and sure. you, you know what I'm saying, I think it's a, well, it's a next level thing that's beyond there. No, no, no. I, I guess, again, that's one of the issues that we'll have to look at. How will they be utilized if, in fact, we do hire them? And, and I'm sure if they're going to be utilized on the beach, then we'll want Tim's input. Okay. So I guess I'll leave my original motion in place. Okay. <clears throat> Any more com comments to be made before we vote? Mr. Sullivan, make a motion. Ms. Pat Sacklin, all in favor say aye. 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 say no. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tyner, number 13. Um, May, I, I'd like to say one thing, yes. and maybe I'll catch up and understand the potential issues. Well, we can come up with a better name. Yeah, because everything we have <laughs> in the <issue, laughs> okay, it would, it would give us a, a little more insight if we knew what we were going to be discussing so we could be prepared. Well, that's, that's why the materials are in here. Um, Mr. Lou Cutter Jar is a resident here on the island, and I'm sure most of you know him and his newsletter he puts out once a month. Is that keeps you know that summarizes his opinions about what's going on in the town of Holden Beach. Um, his last newsletter he had at the end of it something called loose ends, and there was a number of items uh, that you know he was basically saying are things that we need to the board has worked on in the past and we have not completed. So I called him up to just debate and discuss a couple of them with him and he was nice enough to go back and at least show where he feels like we are on all these items. And, and I appreciate what he did because there are a number of items here that we have started talking about and then stopped because either the COVID virus or other things going on. I hope one day we'll get back to somewhat normal, uh, but I felt like looking at this list, number one, I appreciate him making us aware of items that we have not finished up. You know, what I'd like to know is, should we consider prioritizing some of these uh, before some of the others who want to uh, assign a commissioner to kind of chair some of these or get volunteered for commissioner chairing some of these, but there's a number of these items, and we knocked off two of them tonight. At least we started on development fees and the staggered terms and the rules of procedure. Uh, are there others that we want to prioritize and try to move forward over the next four or five or six months? So, once again, I thank thank Lou for at least doing a good job of, of keeping the keeping the list of things that we've started and haven't finished. Uh, wanted to bring this to y'all's attention and see if there's any that y'all would like to. Once again, prioritize sooner than later and see if we can get some volunteers and move them forward. And I, I apologize if the title of the agenda item was too broad. Um, that's the only thing I could basically come up with at the time. Okay, well, I wasn't trying to be mean to you, sir, I, but we've got a lot of people that all they see is the I agenda. Understand. So they would say potential issues. I'm, I'm still new, I'm learning. We always work I'm with learning, to learn. I'm learning that the master's sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any uh, motions, comments? 
I think we need to deal with them just like you do. Woody. This can's been kicked a long time, so some of them are fairly simple to deal with, I would think. Um, we've, I've been in meetings where these were discussed, sitting out there, and um, I felt like at that time, and I still feel like that enough enough information was provided or produced and a lot of people put a lot of work into a lot of the stuff that a decision could have been made at that time but it's just been moved forward and I'm, I'm with Lou and a lot of other people that we need to, if we pick them off one or two a month or come up with some kind of strategy yep. to do it. Um, that was my thoughts. I mean some of these, you know, Tim has done a, done a lot of work on the mega houses on them um, I'm not sure where we are in the commercial district. Um, parking, we've had conversations about. Land use plan is somewhere out there. Speed limit, dog park. We just, to your point, we need to decide. You know, I, I pick two or three or four, five at the most, and, and see if we can get some volunteers to take point on moving forward. I don't have a problem. I, I'd like to to ask the board is how how do these relate to your goals and objectives that you established back early on? That that would be my point. Because those were the those were the objectives and goals that your board that your budget is formulated on and serve as the strategic um, things, the strategic items that you're gonna move toward. I think that's a fair question. I think we do need, before we take action, we need to go back and compare it against the objectives. And and we may decide, you know, we adopted X number of objectives and an item does not fit into that and we don't need to take any action on it. But I think, I think a number of these items are items that would probably fit uh, under one of, our, one of our objectives. And a number of them, probably don't have an impact on budget, but that's something we need to look at. So, I mean, there's a number of these that were in progress, basically finalized in March and April, and then again, everything was dropped, and we went to doing just mandatory business. Um, the mega house zoning is one of them. Um, the speed limit is another. Uh, doom protection game plan was another that was in progress and just stopped. Um, so I think that some of these are just almost, they were almost done. Yep. They were almost done. They were actually out there for the second time for comment. And I think those we really should try to finish. We put all the work into them. I'm, I'm going to make a comment because um, many of these items are being worked on actively, the staff is actively engaged on them, and we have been operating in a crisis mode since COVID-19 came down. There is no need for the perspective that I hear being put forward that We've been sitting up here on our thumbs, not doing these that, kinds of things. That's not I just true. want to make sure. No, 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 no that's, that's not what I meant. Excuse me. And that's if that can, we we were very close to land use plan. We were having <coughs> last conversation. The longer we put it off, the harder it is to bring it back to everybody being on the same page. Right. Speed limits this, and so it's it's really a. It's in the board's hands to finalize some of these things more than more work is needed by staff. These were things that we put all the work into them, and I know what's going to happen if we wait three or four more months. Going back and revisiting the comments on land use plan is going to be even harder. And so these were things that were ready to sign off on, and then we stopped for good reason. And I don't think we need to wait to bring them back because they were on their last comment. For two of them, the house issue and the land use plan, those require public hearings. So we have intentionally not put those back on because I would think that you guys would want, like we have to do the budget public hearing today. We didn't have a choice. But I, those two items, if you could wait a little while longer until we could actually have the public here, 
I would think that would work better for you, but I mean, it's we would they're, just have to do it like today. Like they were actually on the agenda, and were taking off because of COVID. Right. That's right. They were both right. On the so I mean, to be we just don't have the public here right now, so that's it's right. harder to. Well, and and to in do the prioritizing time. these, that's the kind of things we need to take into consideration. We can't do something right now because there's we need to have a public hearing. Right, and, we, and like I said, we can. It's just if you're willing to do a public hearing like this, where the public's not here. Yes, I understand. So that's. That a lot of them have like just items like that is what it is. That's why we haven't put it back on. Yeah. And I apologize, uh, Mr. Town Manager, if you took my comments to mean that I meant the staff was not doing anything. We, I'm well aware of the, that you've had to put a lot of time into the crisis of COVID and things have had to stop. As I said earlier, I'd like to see us try to move some things forward now that we're hopefully didn't soon work back to normal, at least the beach is open right now. I, I want to talk to somewhat back to normal. As long as the governor and the town has a state of emergency in place, there are rules and our normal operations are drastically curtailed. The building inspector and the camera officer now ride around in a truck all day long. They're not here in the building. So our normal way of doing business is drastically altered. We are not in a normal concept of operations. So the loose ends um, term on there, um, I, I take exception to that too. Because it implies that we don't know anything about these. There's nothing being done on it. I got a problem with that because every one of these issues we're engaged on. We either haven't been able to bring it to the board or there are other concerns. We have external agencies that have to be coordinated with on it. Kama, who is the daddy rabbit for land use plans, they haven't had a meeting in however long. I think that June is going to be their first meeting, and they certainly are the ones, the staff up there, um, have, I'm sure, has a backlog on land use plans, regardless of what we do with it. But i said my piece. Thank you very much. I, I take your points. Once again, I'll, you know, I think we're getting tied up too much around wording here. These are items that, once again, we have started. There may be action going on. I wanted to bring them and see if there's any thoughts about that we want to move any of them forward where we can. Once again, we can go through some of these and say, okay, land use plan came with shut down right now. Well, we don't need to do anything. But I do think we're getting tied up just a little bit too much in wording right now. But if the, but if the board doesn't want to do anything, I'm okay. Is there a motion of any kind? If not, we're going to move on. I don't want to cut anybody short if anybody wants to say something. But anybody else have anything to say? Um, we revisit this in July and have everybody think in terms of are there some in here that they think are a priority that don't need a public comment so that there's a clearer idea of what the discussion should be. It would seem that COVID's dictating everything right now. And I mean, that's, that's the way it should be. And and I think before we make any motion or, or design to do anything, give it a little while. None of this are real pressing issues that have to be done today. Okay? And, and I'm fine with it. Like I said, you know, I wanted to bring so this to the table to see if there's anything we wanted to do or prioritize. And what I'm hearing you say is and let's just wait another month. Let's wait. We may have to wait longer than that. That's fine. I'm okay. okay. All right. Let's go to number 14, town manager's report. Good. Yes, sir. I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, start with the lift station three status. We've got the second floor slab poured. Chris may have real current uh, information on this, but 
Um, I've been privy to the progress meeting that was held two weeks ago, uh, coincidental with the engineer's on-site inspection. We're on schedule. Uh, there are three issues with Brunswick County. Brunswick County is looking at revising the terms of its sewer service agreement with the town. Uh, euphemistically, I am understanding that that is aimed at the expansion of the system, but we will be, and when I say the system, the, the total system, uh, for the regional partners, the addition of partners and any increased capacities needed by the existing partners. But we're going to be uh, getting into the details of that uh, the second week in July. Um, I'm really sensitive to the amendment to the sewer provision, service provision agreement. Uh, the town's wholesale water contract with Brunswick County is up 40 years in the making. Um, the terms will remain in effect, but, but the county is looking to revise or readdress that contract within the next 24 months. CARES Act fund. This is the funds that the uh, county received uh, to the tune of about $2.57 million uh, for COVID-related expenses. That decision was made last night to distribute those funds to some portion uh, to the municipalities. That decision was made to do that distribution just like sales tax is done, i.e. on a per capita basis. So of the $846,000 that's gonna go to municipalities, the county holding these is gonna get $8,000. Status on the lock of Folly Inlet Crossing Maintenance Project. It appears to be complete after several iterations of dredging. Um, from today's survey, looks like there's a, a decent channel cut, but the buoys are, they're out of, line, of alignment with the vice core. Um, there is a conference called Thursday with Wilmington District to discuss their 50 year project, the lock of Folly in the crossing projects in addition to the least cost method of disposal. Uh, the long-term memorandum of agreement, the stakeholders meeting was, quarterly meeting was held last week digitally. Um, it was announced at the sand from the FY21 AIWW contract is scheduled to go to Oak Island. Um, the, along with that, the there was $3.8 million from the Shallow Draft Inlet and Aquatic Week Fund that was reprogrammed uh, from the fund uh, to compensate for shortfalls in agriculture. Um, also shared with us is the fact that demand for the Shallow Draft Inlet funds is nearing the point for administrators feel that project will be, projects will become competitive. Uh, status on the Central Reach project or the Florence Michael Hurricane Mitigation Permitting pro Project. Uh, our sand search and archaeological um, deconfliction continues on schedule. Uh, we're anticipating that the permit be submitted and will be submitted in August. Uh, rec programs continue to adapt. The modified outdoor yoga program begins tomorrow. Uh, in the pavilion, the class is full based on social distancing requirements. Uh, there will be a waiting list established. Uh, one of our more popular uh, programs, the tie-dye event, uh, people are actively soliciting participation in that. Uh, it's become a do-it-yourself, and over $400 in t-shirts have been sold to people that are interested in doing that. lot of repeat vacationers that are requesting that. Uh, finally, the Sunday Concerts uh, series. We've had to push five of those concerts uh, for the season to later 
in the year, and the intent is to have two concerts per week if the gathering guidelines permit. We're going to have to play that on a week by week basis. Anything else, Mr. Hewitt? No, sir. Any questions of Mr. Hewitt? Hearing none, the mayor's report is going to be short and brief uh, here tonight. I think probably the most important thing on my mind is the improvement in the overall activity on the island. Uh, there for several weeks, most of us in the uh, property management business were concerned whether or not the renters were going to return and what kind of summer we were going to have. From the town's perspective, we were worried about occupancy tax money. Uh, I can assure you that in the last three weeks, we went from zero to 100 miles an hour, so to speak, uh, with reservations. Uh, every company I talk with, and especially my company, uh, we are doing all we can do to answer telephone calls. Uh, the, uh, the, the people that are coming could possibly exceed last year. Uh, now the spring has already passed. But I'm talking about the summer and possibly this fall. Uh, I am so encouraged right now that I have strong feelings that the town will not suffer from this occupancy tax unless we have some hurricanes or something like that. Uh, the summer's bookings are looking real strong and solid. Sales activities have really really gone through the roof in the last few weeks. Um, I would liken it to the years of 2006 and 7. The inventory is being reduced uh, quickly and the buyers are coming in the doors and over the phones and over the internet like no time in the last five or six years. Uh, so uh, it's a good time for Holden Beach right now. And I would also follow up and say that the people that are coming here are so relieved and in such good frames of mind that it's encouraging. They're just glad to get out of the house. They're glad to be here. And uh, so overall, I would just like to report that things are looking up here at Holy Beach. And uh, several comments have been made to me by visitors as well as residents that the island looks really good. The property owners have done a good job in maintaining the yards and their homes, especially this year. Uh, the public is noticing it, and uh, it's much appreciated. So uh, just a good report overall uh, as far as the mayor's views tonight. Mr. Brown? No comment. No comment. Mr. Tom? Uh, just, as always, want to thank the staff for all the work they're putting in, especially during these difficult times. Also want to thank uh, all the folks who took the time to respond to my email with feedback on the budget. Uh, especially want to thank those that disagreed with my, uh, my points of view. Uh, I appreciate both sides of the argument, so thank you. Also, I thought you might mention it, Coastal Living, no, uh, Rank Holden Beach, the number one beach in the state. I guess we don't want to tell a whole lot of folks so they won't come here, but um, well, I thought it was great. It's a great recognition of the community and great recognition of the, the, the what the town and town staff has been doing for the beach and just what all is going on the beach. A lot of good things. I would also like to reiterate that I'm excited to see this place come back to life. I was on a shoestring for a long time. And, uh, <laughs> I'm certainly glad that it uh, has gotten better before it got worse. Um, still, would encourage everybody to stay safe and use your heads. And uh, I really, especially, want to thank the staff of this town because you guys kept it going. And um, in times when I thought, you know, maybe it was going to fold, and uh, I want to thank you for continuing to work and, and putting yourself out there and, and doing the job. Um, because of that, we were all able to, to continue on some kind of normalcy, so I, I really appreciate that. 
Right. Before I make a comment, I have a question. Is the playground open now? No. Okay. So I it's, guess it's my taped off. I, okay. I guess my comment is, I would suggest that we open the playground. We have the the basketball court is open. Where, right? The basketball court is open. The basketball court is open, but over, under the governor's proclamation, playgrounds can't be open yet. The basketball court is not part of a playground. Is considered a multi-purpose court. All the other county parks that I've checked have their courts open, but playground equipment, because of all the touching and small children, is not until his phase three. Uh, okay. I rode around one Saturday and one Sunday and looked at several municipalities and county parks, and they were opening their courts back up. Um, Oak Island still does not have their splash pad up the last time I checked, and um, the playground equipment itself is still okay. closed off. Well, I guess, I guess I, would, I would say that's just another thing from coronavirus that makes no sense. And the fact that the governor has it, those are guidelines, right? I mean, we opened up the rentals before, and, and we've, done, we've done other things. We don't have to, it makes no sense that a three-year-old kid can't play on, a, on an apparatus, but an old goat like me can play pickleball, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in a susceptible Thing I, I would just open up the playground and let, let kids play. They want to come for the splash pad and everything else. It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, that, that's that. Uh, the other thing, I would ask the town to include in the water bill the fact that the census is going on or to send out a blast on the, on the newsletter because I looked again. We're still at 13%. It's pathetic. I mean, come on. So anyway, j just remind them. And again, I'd like to thank the board for making an adjustment in the 3% uh, salary increase so that we actually show the people that we appreciate. And we, we do, we give them a couple of bucks so that they understand that it's more than just lip service, that we do appreciate the work they do. So, and th thank you for all the hard work you do. And for the people out there, I can't wait for this to be over so some can be sitting back here and, and listen and bring a little life to these meetings because this is, this is hard. This is this is hard. Ms. Grant. Yeah, I want to echo Brian's uh, comment about everybody stay safe. Uh, I actually called my drugstore because I'm due to get my second shingle shot, but they're still not doing them. And the comment they made was, well, you know, we're waiting to get more protective equipment and we're waiting because right now we're going through a spike. So Brunswick County views it as we're going through a spike. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, so, I mean, I think it's just common sense when you're going to crowded places that are indoors, you know, to just follow the distancing and wear a mask. It's nice to see the grocery stores actually have paper goods on the shelves again, that you don't go every time and everything's wiped out. So I'm assuming the grocery stores are keeping up with demand and we'll see what happens for 4th of July. but. Things do look a whole lot better than they looked two to three weeks ago. And I think if everybody just takes a little bit of care, we're going to have a great summer. I failed to mention the Hogan Beach Chapel mm -hmm. is having services again this past Sunday. It was the first time since the virus issue came about. And uh, we'll continue to have two services, 8.30 and 11.00. Uh, until further notice. So, uh, all the precautions that can be taken are being taken to make sure it's safe to be there. So, everyone's invited. All right, commissioners, anybody have anything else you want to add before we go to number 17 on the agenda? I, I think if we could just revisit, as I was sitting here thinking, we agreed that we should form the committee for the seasonal uh, offices, but we didn't choose the two board members to sit on it, and I don't see why we should put that off another month. Can we come back and reset? Okay. To a date time, I'm sorry. Would anybody Watch like, pleasure. Would anybody like to be on that, on that I, committee? I'm happy to volunteer. There you go. That's one. Are you not going to do it? Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> You're a cop. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll be glad to do it, but you have some, some experience in, in that I world. 
My uh, experience on college was being arrested my freshman year in college. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I, I did. So, so Miss Pat and Mike. Pat Mike. Was that any? That's a joke. Okay. Does everybody understand what we're doing here? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hewitt, do you understand what takes place? All right. Anything else? And we'll talk about going into our executive session. Brown, do you want to make a motion or anything like that? Motion to go into executive session. Second. A motion to adjourn first? No. 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 Okay. All right. We've got a motion in a second. Okay, Madam Clerk, do you want to read that? Yes, sir. Executive session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11-A6 to discuss qualification, competence, performance of a public officer or employee. All right. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say no. All right. We are going to go into executive session and come out and hopefully before midnight, go back into regular session and then we will adjourn. So right now... First, we will set when we're going to meet again. Or when we're going to receive. No, that would be down at the next item. Yeah. No, I, I just mean we don't want to adjourn before we set when we're going to come back and, read, and do our approval of the budget of the ordinance. Instead of adjourn, we'll recess to a date time certain, yeah. and, and I'll post it on the website for whoever needs to. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. We're going to go and exact the session in here, right? Okay, we are back into regular session. Um, is there a motion of any kind relative to Mr. Hewitt? Do you want to say anything? Uh, we're going to recess. not adjourn, but we're going to recess. We need to agree a time. Yeah. So I'm yes. looking. I, the earliest I think that you can get together to consider the adjustments to the proposed ordinance um, is it'd be seven sixteen nine, ten tomorrow night. It's but realistically, it would be Thursday morning. I would request some time to be able to adequately prepare the document um, itself, um, unless in, in order to get it proofread. Those changes occur across all the operational funds. I want to make sure that those things are accurate before it comes back to you. Unless you are comfortable with me making the adjustments administratively and approving it based on what you've instructed or expressed as your desired changes tonight. I would like to ask for some, some time consideration in that I got a daughter's appointment Thursday morning early. And, and I didn't finish. I was going to say, in order to get that, to do that adequate preparation, I was thinking Tuesday. Oh. I, I am gone all next week. Okay. Can you do it Friday? I was going to say, can we do it Friday afternoon? Only. <laughs> I can. Two o'clock. You know, <clears throat> I'm at a college event all day Friday. Not in my vote. It's needed. <clears throat> Mr. Brown can do a good job. Yep. Do the do the adjustments that we made take care of the Yes sir. Okay. Absolutely. They they take care of that. You could distribute that for the commissioner's individual review. Right. You don't have to have a special meeting just for them to review. I would think. We we have to we have, have to pa we have to actually vote to pass yeah, it. But I what understand is, that. But I, well, you don't need the document, is what he was saying. You could vote to approve the ordinance with the changes. You just specifically announce it, and then we'll administratively correct it on our end. Thursday night on the table. Say again. I'm committed Thursday night from four thirty on. I can do any time at the 12. Yes. I can do Thursday afternoon. Well, I was going to say we can always do a late afternoon. There should be. What? Well, good time Thursday afternoon? No, no, I'm just saying for in, us to do, to do a quick. After three, 3 to 4.30. 3 to 4.30. Yeah. 
Three o'clock. Three thirty. Three thirty. I'm good with that. So, are we acknowledging that we're, that that you want to just do an approval, and then they'll administratively handle it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Third. Okay. Three. Three. Because the only other third. option is third. to wait until the the 29th or the 30th to do it. If we all want to be here, I'm just saying. Three thirty Thursday next afternoon week, to be so. done with. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I need a motion. Everybody happy with that? All right. I just need a motion to recess until three thirty. Motion to recess till three thirty Thursday afternoon. Second. And a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 We stand recess until Thursday at three thirty.